Okay, so welcome back to this video on uh, the Vogelstein model of colorectal carcinoma. Okay, so what we want to ask now is what's going to happen if we get two loss of function mutations in p53 in one of these blue cells, one of these late adenoma cells, which already has two loss of function mutations in its genes for APC, one gain of function mutation in a KRAS gene, and two loss of function mutations in its SMAD4 genes. Okay, so, basically, P53 is also a tumor suppressor gene. It, it, um, st it's preventing you becoming cancerous, basically. And in order to get cancer, you usually have loss of function of P53. So, uh, if you want to lose function of P53 completely, what you need to do is you need to knock out both P53 genes. So you have two copies of P53, and if you want to get complete um, loss of function of P53, then you need to knock out both P53 genes. So you need loss of function mutations in both P53 genes, and what that will lead to is complete loss of uh, these uh, pathways protecting the cell from uh, genomic damage, basically. So, um, cells will get DNA damage and they will not repair it, they will not stop uh, going through the cell cycle, and they will not commit apoptosis. So, you get two loss of function mutations in P53. And basically, that's the final step in this process of forming cancer. So what's going to happen is in just one of these cells, let's say this one, this is one of these blue cells, but in this cell, this cell is unlucky enough to get two uh, loss of function mutations in P53. So let's denote it in orange. Okay, so this orange cell now has two loss of function mutations in P53. Now, it's already dividing very fast. When P53 loses its function, that actually causes it to divide even faster because you lose the mitogen overactivity pathways, which prevent uh, activity. You lose, basically, this uh, P21, and you lose the apoptotic um, uh, pro-apoptotic proteins which were holding you back. So, what's going to happen is this cell is going to divide very, very rapidly. So, it's already got the all of these mutations which are pro-growth. So, it's going to make a whole bunch of cells which are copies of itself, basically. So, I'll draw a few of them here. Okay. Now, you have to think about this. All these orange cells have, firstly, they have all of these mutations, so they're dividing very fast, but they also have two loss of function mutations in P53. Now, if they suffer any sort of DNA damage, and I want to stress, DNA damage happens all the time. It is not a rare incident. It's happening all the time. I think the um, statistic is if you go and lie on a beach for a day, you will have got 60 million um, you will have had 60 million insults to your DNA. You will have had 60 million uh, DNA damage incidents, basically. So these are not rare occasions, basically. I think it's usually 6 million if you're not lying in the sun all day. But the point is that mutations are not... Well, DNA damage is not rare. Usually it's fixed, and the activation of the fixing process is through this. But all of these cells, basically, they don't have these fixing pathways. So if they suffer DNA damage, they're not going to bother fixing it. They're going to continue cycling. They're going to spin out of control, basically. So what's going to happen is something known as genetic instability. So we, what you have here is a population of cells which are genetically unstable. So genetic instability. Okay. And basically this means that they will acquire mutations far quicker than normal cells acquire mutations, simply because if they get DNA damage, they're just not going to repair it. So what's going to happen? You're going to get complete mess. You're going to get mutations happening all over the place. So in all of these cells, you might be getting different mutations forming. So basically, you produce this population of cells which is undergoing mutations like wildfire, basically. 
And what's going to happen is that within this population of cells, within this population of orange cells, and I, it should be massive great population of orange cells, of course. I'm just too lazy to draw them all. Within this population of orange cells, what will begin to happen is you'll get some really, really dangerous cells, basically. So you'll get some of them undergoing mutations which are very, very dangerous and mean that they can start invading the healthy tissue. So let's say this one here just happens to get some mutation that means that it starts making some protein which starts breaking down the healthy tissue, basically. Then it's going to start invading into the healthy tissue. It's going to make loads of genetically identical brothers because it's, you know, it's got all of these mutations here, so it will copy itself loads of times, and you'll get loads of these horrible cells which are going to invade the healthy tissue. And this is when you start saying that you have cancer. This is cancer. The, this production of a population of genetically unstable cells, which can then undergo all sorts of mutations, and then, you know, loads of these mutations might just end up killing the cell, so that's good, but some of them will give the cell uh, the ability to start attacking other cells, and that's bad. So you'll start getting destruction of the healthy colonic epithelium, and it will start invading further down, and this is then when you call this a colorectal carcinoma. Okay, and uh, moreover, some of these cells in this genetically unstable population may get mutations that then allow them to metastasize. So basically, you're going to get, in this genetically unstable population, you're going to get cells which are invasive, so they're destroying uh, the healthy tissue of the uh, large intestine of the colon, and you're also going to get metastatic uh, cells, cells which can go into the bloodstream and then go uh, to other portions of the body and take up root in those other portions of the body and start new secondary tumours in other portions of the body. And that's when you get secondary uh, colorectal carcinoma in other locations in the body. Okay, so often it goes to the liver m merely because um, it will go into the hepatic portal vein, potentially, and then the, uh, the first stop from the hepatic portal vein is the liver. Okay, so the reason it becomes metastatic is because, um, well, one of the reasons is because if we have a blood vessel here, eventually these horrible invasive cells will burst through the blood vessel, and then they'll start chucking off cells into the bloodstream, basically. So you're going to get invasion of these dangerous cells. So, just to review then, what has happened is that when you got these two loss of function mutations in p53, you produced a population of cells which were genetically unstable. So these loss of function mutations in p53 mean that all of these cells can get mutations uh, and then just not fix them. And then some of these mutations in this population, some of these cells will get mutations that allow them to destroy other cells and invade the healthy tissue. And that's when it uh, becomes cancerous, when it's invading and destroying the healthy tissue. And when it invades and destroys blood vessels, then it's going to chuck, um, chuck cancerous cells off into the bloodstream and they can go and set up secondary tumours elsewhere in the body. Okay. Uh, and uh, this whole process, basically, um, from going from cells which just have these two loss of function mutations in APC to these orange cells which have two loss of function mutations in both of their genes of APC, gain of function in one of their KRAS genes, loss of function in both of their SMAD4 genes, and then loss of function in both of their P53 genes. Um, this uh, happens basically in progression. So this is what is meant by cancer being a multi-stage process, i.e. you don't just have one colonic epithelial cell getting a mutation and then just becoming cancerous. It doesn't work like that. You set up these uh, populations which gradually, within each population, one of the cells then acquires the next mutation that takes it onto the next stage of the cancer. Okay, and uh, that's my um, um, story of the Vogelstein model complete now.